Today's lesson is on the book of Titus, and uh, Brother Kent, if you could pass the notes out, please. Today's lesson is on the book of Titus. What was last week's lesson about? The Bible. <laughs> what was last week's lesson about? What was the theme of 2 Timothy? First Timothy. That's First Timothy. Good job. And that theme is echoed in 2 Timothy. But what is the main theme of 2 Timothy? You like my answer. No. Endure hardship as a good soldier. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And what verse is that found in? Second Timothy, two three. Two three. We memorize that verse. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This week we are on the book of Titus, and our memory verse is on the bottom. We'll look at that at the end of the class. Yeah. And uh, the book of Titus. About the book of Titus, and at the top of your notes, the author is the Apostle Paul, and. Uh, Paul will very shortly be released from his first imprisonment here. We see some hints to this in the back of the book. We see in uh, chapter 3, verse 12, it says, And when I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me in an Nicopolis. Tychicus would be sent by Paul to uh, also deliver some other epistles. And uh, I take it to be that Paul is shortly to be released here. And uh, he's going to spend the winter in Nicopolis. So uh, we see that uh, clue of what's going on in Titus chapter 3, verse 12. And um, Paul is, or I mean, uh, yeah, Paul is Titus' spiritual father. We see in Titus chapter 1, verse 4. In Titus 1, verse 4, the Bible says, Charlie, could you read that for us, please? Titus 1, 4. Oh, that's fine. What's that? I said you put you on the spot there. I didn't quite mean to. I just to looked Titus, it up. my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Uh, verse four, please. I'm sorry, I told you. Oh, he did. Never mind. I, I, uh, I must <laughs> need more coffee or something. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, good job, Charlie. Thank you. The audience of this book is, of course, as it says in that verse, is Titus. And uh, Titus is a Greek believer. And can I get someone to read Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3? Galatians 2? Nick, you should get that one. Uh, Galatians 2, one Galatians two, one Galatians through 3. Galatians 2. Then 14 years after I went up, Again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus also, or took, took Titus with me also. I went up by revelation and uh, communicated unto them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So we see Titus here is a Greek believer. He's a companion of the Apostle Paul in ministry. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 23, we see... It says, Wherefore any, whether any, do inquire after Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. And uh, Titus, we see, is a uh, laborer in the ministry. He is a companion of Paul. And we see in um, the book of Titus, back to the book of Titus in verse number 5, that Titus has been uh, placed in Crete by the Apostle Paul to uh, plant churches and put pastors in charge of the churches there. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set and order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. 
So Titus is basically a pastor who's in the island of Crete. Someone tell me, where is Crete? It's in an island. It's an island. Where is it? It's in the Aegean Sea. The Aegean Sea? What's it look like? Good drawing. It's exactly what it looks like. It looks like almost like a banana. Um, random fact uh, for those who like history. Um, the Nazis attacked Crete when the British were holding it in World War II and they used paratroopers. They lost one out of four soldiers landing on the island and Hitler was so amazed at the casualties he pretty much never used paratroopers again, which is a major tactical blunder, but that's just a random fact uh, to help keep you awake for the morning. The island of Crete is located south of Greece and uh, it would be a Greek island and the people there would have basically Greek culture more or less and they would basically, uh, they would all speak Greek and Titus himself being a probably more mainland Greek if you will, would uh, they would be uh, very easily able to communicate with each other and um, we uh, see about his mission we already looked somewhat at that. He's the pastor of the church in Crete, uh, responsible for planning and establishing churches in Crete. Looks like we have a double post there. And uh, we also see that later he will be sent by Paul to Dalmatia, which is modern Yugoslavia, in 2 Timothy 4.10. Yes, Pastor Price. Uh, it's, it's interesting, too, according to verse 5, that he ordains elders in every city. And um, a lot of there's a lot of church doctrine that just ignores this trip, this uh, verse of the scripture. For instance, the Bible churches uh, would have an elder leader, elder-based leadership where they would make the pastor uh, an equal or with the elders, but they they do misunderstand that an elder is a pastor. And this is a good example of um, you know if you have an elder in every city, it would be obvious that that would be the individual who would be responsible for the oversight. So it's a good place to help understand the role of the pastor. Or and it's a universal word, pastor, elder, bishop. Um, a lot of those words used interchangeably. So I just want to point that out. Mm. Thank you. We see about the date of this book. The date this book is written is about AD 61 to 62. And uh, Paul will shortly be released, as noted previously right. in this world. He's left us here for a purpose. And there's a specific way in which we ought to live in this present world. And... Uh, we see that this book, as we go through it, we'll see it contains content very similar to that of 1 Timothy. And like 1 Timothy, it has instructions both the men and the women. It has instructions about the pastor. It has instruction about, uh, as Tim Timothy used the term, profane and vain babblings and vain janglings. It'll also have a uh, warning about, let me see, it uh, about arguments which are unprofitable and vain. We'll see a number of uh, similar themes and threads, but we see the focus of this book is more about uh, wicked living than false doctrine. A major warning of 1 Timothy was about false doctrine creeping in, among uh, other things. But the main focus here of this book will be about right living. And uh, we see the context for this righteous living is the grace of God and the rapture. If you'll notice your notes there, it says the grave of God. Scratch it out, please, and write the grace of God on top of it. Um, it should say the grace of God, not the grave of God. C and V are located very close on the keyboard. So the, uh, the context for righteous living we see in chapter 2, and uh, we'll go over it a little more in a bit, but uh, the rapture's coming. God has given us great grace through salvation, and the rapture's coming. We as believers need to live in light of it. And uh, Jesus rose from the grave. He didn't stay dead. His grave is empty. Now we'll look at the, uh, the book itself. We'll go through it briefly as we've been doing in our survey series here. We see the prologue, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And uh, down in verse 4, to Titus. So... There's our uh, address from Paul to Titus. And uh, we see Roman numeral 2, Titus' mission outlined. And we see uh, in verse 5, we see he's, his mission, first he's commissioned to ordain pastors. And uh, verse 5, For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. And uh, 
The Bible then gives out some qualifications.